these two are, should be considered armed and dangerous at all times. Yeah. These guys' sticks are weapons of mass destruction against National Hockey League teams. On today's show, it's a game day preview. Both the Ottawa Senators and Edmonton Oilers were shut out in their last game, and each team is hoping to avoid a three-game losing streak. And Gary Bettman will be out of attendance at the CTC. Boo! <laughs> and last night's out-of-town scoreboard was kind to the Ottawa Senators. This is Brady Kachuk, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators Podcast. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome! You are locked on to the Ottawa Senators, the only daily podcast covering the Sens. On the outskirts of enemy territory, I'm Ross Levitan, alongside Brandon Piller up in the Blue Mountains. Today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. Still searching for a great candidate for your company? Don't search, just match with Indeed. Today is Tuesday, November 19th in Pilsy. I know we discussed how the Ottawa Senators didn't really get shut out in the game against Carolina, but it's time to score some goals tonight, man. Unfortunately, though, Ross, looking across the other side of the rink, the Edmonton Oilers are thinking the same thing as they were just shut out by the Montreal Canadiens of all teams. So you got two teams coming off shutouts, but... I don't know what's what's worse, Ross. The Ottawa Senators having to stew on that for a couple days and know you haven't scored in your last game and, and that's stuck in your mind. Or the Oilers fresh off being shut out and maybe they have a little bit more uh, emotion based on that since it's such a quick turnaround for them. Well, I'd be more worried because Connor McDavid was held off the score sheet here in back-to-back games. Has not happened since game six and seven of the Stanley Cup Finals and hasn't happened in the regular season since last November, (laughs) a calendar year. So you don't want to poke the two best players in the league, two players who have historically destroyed the Ottawa Senators. Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl will get to their career numbers against Ottawa, but they are among some of the most impressive stats I think we've ever pulled up for an away team on this show. Yeah, and Ross, I don't don't think we need to do it because we do it every time, but the numbers that McDavid and Drysaddle put up in the COVID year, the All-Canada Cup year, were were laughable. It was embarrassing. Like, that was the Harlem Globetrotters going up against the Washington Generals, Oilers versus Sens. The All-Canadian Cup? I thought we called it the Mickey Mouse year. Oh, well, I mean, d- depends. Depends uh, what narrative you're going for there. Well, when Montreal found their way into the Western Conference Finals against the Vegas Golden Knights, I think that put a, a nail into what I thought about the year. Yeah, and when the Stanley Cup Final is between two Eastern teams, it's a little weird. That's extremely weird. Anyways, neither here nor there. That's a season to forget. Yeah, the Senators went 0-9 against the Oilers. And we waited 310 days for hockey, and then Ottawa started 1-10-1. <laughs> yeah, that 0 and because I remember the last game up against the Oilers, we, like, that was our Stanley Cup. We're like, we just can't, we can't lose nine games to one team in one season. And they did. Oh, they did. And it wasn't particularly close in that series. I actually want to check because the uh, oh, the man. head-to-head results. What, what do you think the goal differential was for, for those nine games? Because I've got it right in front of me. It is one of the, the, the most embarrassing stats, I think, in Sens history. 21. Uh, worse. 23. You're close. Oh. Yeah. Ottawa scored wow. 18 goals in nine games and allowed 41. 41 <laughs> goals in nine games. The Edmonton Oilers goals for per game was 4.5, four and a half goals on average yeah. against the Senators. There was that one play I still remember where Marcus Hogberg was like literally so far off his yeah. angle. Like forget Connor McDavid. Yeah, I remember this one actually. Brandon Pillar could have scored that goal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's brutal. Hey, yeah, today, I today, today. Not, I don't want to talk about that anymore. Ottawa actually beat Edmonton last year in their visit to Ottawa. So there you go. Build yes, off sir. of that. Build Woo. off of that for the Ottawa Senators. Look, the Sens have actually been playing good hockey. They've had spurts where you're wondering one thing or the other, and no team goes into Carolina 
and looks particularly strong because no. Carolina plays that man-on-man defense. They're always stick on puck. They're always about an inch away from a slashing or interference penalty, but they seem to get all the calls, neither here nor there. But over the course of the last 10 games, the Ottawa Senators have played like a playoff team, despite their record. And I'm happy to put myself out on a limb and have other fan bases mock that. Results, results, results. I understand, but the process is there for the Ottawa Senators that if they keep this up, I think they can get three out of four wins on this homestand, which I think should be the expectation. And Ross, there's really no excuses. Like you've got a four game homestand here and you are blessed with good health. Well, like I can't remember the last time ever the Ottawa Senators had every, well, I mean, Noah Gregor, but like there's no key detrimental long-term injuries that really ruin the lineup. Like this is the healthiest this team has been in my memory. So like they got to be able to say, Hey, we've got the roster the way we want it to look. We're at home for a couple uh, games here so we can get comfortable, get settled in. It's all Western teams. So that pressure of winning and losing points isn't, isn't as heightened. There's, there's no excuses for the Ottawa Senators not to have good performances here and at least push teams towards close results here. Travis Green just spoke to the media. We've got our lineup set for tonight. It will be the same that faced the Carolina Hurricanes. Josh Norris between Brady Kachuk and Ridley Gregg. Tim Stutzla will center Claude Giroux and Drake Batherson. Shane Pinto between Michael Amadio and David Perron. And Adam Gaudet with Nick Cousins and Zach McEwen. On the back end, it's Jake Sanderson and Artem Zub. It's Thomas Shabbat and Nick Jensen. It's Tyler Clevin and Travis Hamanick and Pilsey. It is official. Linus Allmark will be back in goal. He has not played since the Thursday game where he allowed five goals on 19 shots against Philly. Yeah, Linus Allmark being back in that is the right decision in my opinion. Uh, I'm glad to see that. And he needs to have a big night tonight because... Like we mentioned, the Edmonton Oilers, Oilers are coming off being shut out as well. That's a team that likes to score points in bunches, and they're going to be hungry to make sure that they don't get blanked back-to-back nights in a row up against Eastern Conference teams. So all marks got to be sharp tonight. He's got to be sharp, and he's got to be dialed in right from the beginning. One thing I like yes. about Linus Allmark playing this game is you're not going to have a situation where he goes X amount of minutes without a shot against yeah. For him, he needs to face some serious action. I'd like him to have 10 to 12 shots in the first 15 minutes of this game and just allow himself to get into a rhythm. Feel good. Stop the first couple and go from there. Linus Allmark in his career against the Oilers has a 3-2-1 record, a 3-0-2 goals against, and an 897 save percentage. That's much better than what he's at on the season in which he's played 10 games, is 4-4-1 has one shutout, but also an 890 save percentage, a 2.77 goals against average. There's nobody that understands the last game was unacceptable more than Linus Allmark. You saw him shatter his stick on the post after that Matt Vemichkov overtime winner. I think we're going to see the best of Linus Allmark tonight. At least, I hope so. Let's... Let's start the clock, Ross, and let's reset the counter. You know, the the classic Simpsons meme where it's at the nuclear plant and there's the sign X amount of days since blah, blah, blah. disaster. Verbal meme. Let's get that to zero games without a goal scored below the goal line against the Ottawa Senators. That's uh, Let's start there. I like that. Yep. That's the goal for tonight's game against the Edmonton Oilers. Who is your locked-on player to watch? My locked-on player to watch is going to be the German superstar, Timmy Stutzla, uh, in 17 games played, 7 goals, 14 assists. Time on ice, 1949, and his career versus Edmonton, 15 games played, 7 goals, 4 assists, 11 points in 15 games. Not too bad. But, Ross, the one stat I wanted to put here, Only one power play goal for Tim Stutzla. This will blend into my keys to victory a little bit here, but I believe that tonight is an opportune time for Timmy to pass last year's power play goals and and get two on the season, double his total from last season. 
Well, one thing that I think goes hand in hand with that is the Senators' power play, despite cooling off on the road, still red hot at home. The Ottawa Senators yep. have the best power play on home ice this season, clicking at 40.6%. The Winnipeg Jets are in second at 38%. So, And after that, it goes down to 33% with Vegas. They're the only team that starts with a four for the for this season. So I, I think that you're looking at the power play being a huge key to tonight's game. And also, we'll get to the Edmonton Oilers, but we know historically their power play has been elite with the talent they have, but it, it hasn't been that. Yeah, it's cold this year. So you really need to worry about that because to me, it's not that it's doing poorly. It sucks. It's it's doing poorly. They're due. Now, without Darnell Nurse, they do have a little bit of, you know, problems on the second unit. Like, yes. they've got Matthias Ekholm on the power play right now. They load up their top unit. Yeah. And if I'll, you, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. Yes, but I, okay. I like that. Okay, 40% at home on the power play for the Ottawa Senators this year. And we'd love to see Timmy pass last year's total of one power play goal and get his double second it. so far. This season, what's double in German, Pilsy? Oh boy, I don't know. But two, eins is one. Dry is two. Eins drei. Are you saying Dry Saddle's gonna have two points tonight? Maybe I'm probably wrong on that, uh, which is disappointing Sway. for my German hair. Sway is uh, two. Okay, well, oops. I, uh, dry is three, so I skipped two on that one. Great, three point night coming for Dry Saddle oh, for Timmy. My luck, my locked on player is going to be Jake Sanderson tonight. I talked about it in yesterday's episode, how important his defending is going to be this week against tonight, Connor McDavid, tomorrow or to Thursday, you're going to have Jack Eichel Saturday. You're going to have Elias Pedersen and or JT Miller going head to head with you. You need to be at your best skating. And you look at his numbers this season, 11 points in 17 games. That's perfectly fine, but zero even strength points is mind-blowing to me. Now he's averaging 24 minutes and 17 seconds. And Jake Sanderson is also third in the National Hockey League in takeaways with 19. So this is the core of the team. Along with Brady Kachuk, this is the Sens lottery picks. We didn't get gifted 100 first overall picks like the Edmonton (laughs) Oilers did. This is the top-end talent that they're going to go toe-to-toe with against McDavid and Drysaddle. So the third overall pick and the fifth overall pick from the 2020 draft need to be at their best if the Sens are going to have success against the Edmonton Oilers. More on the game. We'll look at it from the Oilers' perspective, check in with how they're doing so far in this young season, and more. The 8-8-1 Ottawa Senators back on home ice for four straight games. If you're planning on heading to any of them at the Canadian Tire Center, make sure to get your tickets to the Glebe Central Pub Shuttle. Just $17 round trip to and from the pub. Great times, great vibes at the GCP. Okay, more on the other side. You're listening to Locked On Senators, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Mary J's. Mary J's is a locally owned cannabis dispensary in the Ottawa area. They've got four stores in Ottawa. You can check them out at Riverside South, Orleans, Greeley, and Russell. Mary J's offers the best and newest products in the market, and they're adding new stuff to the menu every single week to keep it fresh. Mary J's offers competitive pricing. In fact, Guys, they're going to price match any store in Ottawa. That means you're guaranteed to get the best price around when you shop at Mary J's. And they have awesome customer service with friendly bud tenders who are always ready to help you out. One of the owners, Dashy, diehard Sense fan, absolute beauty. He's usually at one of the four stores, so go say what up to Dashy. Pick his brain about the Sense and all the latest, greatest products that Mary J's has to offer. Check out the website and get yourself a loyalty card as well. Check it out, guys. It's Mary J's Dispensary. Today's episode is also brought to you by our friends over at Indeed. They're driven for the search for better. And when it comes to hiring, the best way to get a candidate isn't to search at all. So don't search match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. It's a global 
350 million visitors, and that's according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Quality is the key here. Indeed doesn't just help hire faster. 93% of employers agree that Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites. So ditch the busy work and use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect faster. Listeners to this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash locked on. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on right now and support locked on senators by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. All right, Pilsy, game day for the Ottawa Senators hosting the Edmonton Oilers. Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl's only regular season trip to the CTC. It's a 7 o'clock Eastern puck drop, and Vegas doesn't know what to do with this one. Both teams are minus money on FanDuel. The wow. Ottawa Senators minus 108, the Oilers minus one. 11. Before we get back to this game, I just want to say amazing news coming out last night on Instagram from David Perron's wife, Vanessa. If you've been following the story, their child had an immediate need for surgery right away after birth. And you can go read the entire um, Instagram post. It's uh, Vanessa Perron is, is the name. It's a public account. So I don't feel like I'm stepping on toes by uh, sharing this information. They're home is the long and short of it. They had the surgeries. They've been in constant back and forth from uh, hospitals to hotels to home. And it's just great that now David Perron and his wife have a healthy child at home. And now they can focus on getting back to normalcy, which includes David Perron continuing to reinsert himself into this new team with the Ottawa Senators. Yeah, it's such great news. We're so happy for the Perron family. I mean, that's got to be such a re- uh, sigh of relief when you can finally bring your new baby home and just start to feel a sense of settling in. So awesome to see from the Perron family. And uh, we're hoping uh, David Perron can get things going with the sense. Elizabeth is home, and that's great news. It feels yep. like David Perron's home with the Ottawa Senators. He actually played a fair bit of his career with the uh, Edmonton Oilers going way back when he had the white skates, all that. He played for the Edmonton Oilers, actually less than I thought, 116 games with the Oilers, had 76 points um, way back in his mid-20s. So uh, a couple revenge games coming up this year. He played the inaugural season with the Vegas Golden Knights as well, Uh, had 66 points in 70 games there. That's pretty good Um, with, with them. So, I think this will be a nice way for him to get back in the mix after a first game against Carolina, being at home for those four games, getting to go and see his new daughter and his wife and the rest of his family after each game. I think this is going to be a good week for David Perron. So a bonus look at locked on player tonight. I think David Perron is going to really show that he's getting back into a rhythm after multiple practices and having a game under his belt now. Yeah, I agree. And he's put in a good spot on that third line with Michael Amadio and Shane Pinto. So we're rooting for him for sure. All right, let's take a look at tonight's opponent. The Edmonton Oilers coming into town with a B in their bonnet, to say the least. A 3 nothing shutout loss last night to the Montreal Canadiens. And they looked lifeless despite outshooting Montreal 30-25. to They've, they lost in overtime against the Toronto Maple Leafs. So like Ottawa, despite having two straight losses, they lost in overtime and then they lost in a shutout fashion, both by the score of five to four in the overtime game as well. They're without Darnell Nurse on the back end and they're going with seven defensemen and 11 forwards, the old Guy Boucher special, but they aren't going to skate this morning, of course, after a late game last night. So we're basing this off of their lineup against Montreal. Chris Knobloch is planning to roll out. Connor McDavid at center between Ryan Nugent Hopkins and Zach Hyman. Then the second unit is Leon Dreisaitl with Valtteri Paul Colson and Corey Perry. Still, like 15 years later, after beating the Sens in the Stanley Cup Final, this guy's still coming to town, still 
The third line is Adam Henrique with Matthias Janmark and Connor Brown, another hashtag sends abroad, and Derek Ryan with Jeff Skinner on the fourth line. On defense, it's Matthias Ekholm and Evan Bouchard. No defensive pair in the league has played more minutes together than those two. You've got Brett Kulak with Troy Stetcher, Travis Dermott with Josh Brown, hashtag sends abroad, and then you've got Emberson there as well, who came over in the summer for a trade for hashtag sends abroad, Cody Cece sending him to San Jose. Ty Emberson is his name, and Stuart Skinner will start in goal. Calvin Pickard played the game in Montreal. Pilsy, what are your thoughts on this roster? It feels so top heavy, especially on the back end. Yeah, big time, Ross. Losing Darnell Nurse really kind of shakes up that decor for Edmonton. And then Victor Arvidsson was a guy they brought in. They were excited to add some depth scoring. Unfortunately, with Victor Arvidsson, the story is that he has a really hard time staying healthy. And then the Jeff Skinner move, I thought that was going to be a good move where he could add some scoring to the bottom six. Hasn't really gone either way that the team or Skinner would like because he's on the fourth line. He, like This guy went from making, what, $9 million with the Sabres, and he was able to re uh, revive his career, and he popped off a couple of years ago, but it's not looking so good for him in Edmonton so far. Well, for him, it's it's all about playing in the playoffs, right? Jeff Skinner's never played a playoff game. It's insane. And he le- I'm pretty sure he left Carolina right the year before they made it. And yeah. he got to Buffalo. Well, wait. No, Buffalo hasn't made the playoffs in 13 years. No, they haven't. He, well, no, because Carolina started making the playoffs in 2019. And he left in 2018 after being there for 10 years and never making the playoffs oh. either. So that's that's as tough as it gets. Are he the Oilers played... going to miss the playoffs? Is no. that what we're getting to getting at here? I mean, then he would have to take a long look in the mirror and just say, "Hey, hey. playoffs might not be for me, pal." They They're not, not in a wild card me. spot, Ross. Well, they where well, were they tied. last? Where they're were tied. they last November nineteenth? Right, this team went on that unreal run once the uh, once the head coaching change took effect at the start of December. But Jeff Skinner has played 1,025 NHL games, zero in the playoffs. But who's your... Go ahead. That's almost as crazy. Imagine doing 1,166 podcasts with no playoffs. Imagine. Can't relate. Yeah, no. People do that. They stick with it. Sickos. Good work ethic. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what needs to be applauded, the work ethic. <laughs> um, my lookout player. Save even... it. More coming up next. You're listening to Locked On Senators, <laughs> your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action. With over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings, Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on Prize Picks. You heard me right, guys. You can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. Sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize picks is the best way to win real money this football season. Which players are going off? Which ones aren't? Well, make your picks in less than 60 seconds and turn your sports opinions into real money all season long on prize picks. Download the app today and use code LOCKEDONNHL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. That's code LOCKEDONNHL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Prize picks. Run your game. Game day, 7 o'clock puck drop at the Canadian Tire Center. The Ottawa Senators, 8-8-1, eight, eight, and one, taking on an Edmonton Oilers team that has surprisingly also struggled to start the season. The Oilers are 9-8-2 and two in 19 games. They're 5-4-1 and one in their last 10. They're rocking a minus 10 goal differential so far this season. To put that in perspective, the Ottawa Senators are plus 2 in the goal differential. The Ottawa Senators have scored 53 goals and or scored 55 and allowed 53. 
while the Oilers have scored 50, five less than Ottawa, and allowed seven more. They're at 60 goals against. Mm. Only the San Jose Sharks in the Pacific Division have allowed more goals than the Edmonton Oilers. For the Senators to win tonight, you have to score four. You have to score four. That's how you beat the Edmonton Oilers. And I think we can pencil in dry saddle for dry points. And we can have McDavid in for another couple because those two dominate the Ottawa Senators. And that's why they are our lookout players to watch tonight. Ross, I don't know if I fully agree because I feel like you don't want to play a run and gun type game. So if it ends up being a 5-4 game or something like that, I don't like the way that that's going to look for the Ottawa Senators because the Oilers are able to have that top heavy offense just dominate. And part of that goes with our two lookout players here, Leon Dreisaitl, the other German superstar in this game in night in sorry, 24 games against the Sens, 16 goals, 18 assists for 34 points this season. He leads the Oilers in 19 games, 13 goals, 11 assists. And I wanted to highlight, Ross, four game-winning goals. This guy cl- comes up clutch when he's needed. And sometimes you look at game-winning goals, Ross, and you're like, ah, that's just a cheeky, like, he scored the third goal in a 5-2 win or something. So it's not really that clutch. Well, how about three of his game-winning goals came in overtime? So this guy's able, when he needs to, to just put the game away. So I'm going to be looking out for the dry Germans in Dreisaitl and then locked on to Tim Stutzler. Yeah, and he's got that burger flipper of a stick. It's an enormous paddle. He's such a great passer. And then he's got the rock star zone completely on lockdown. How many goals does he score from below the bottom of the circle? It's unreal oh, no. how quick he can get that shot up. I know. I did that on oh, purpose. No. Yeah, I don't know about behind the goal line, but from the bottom of the circle to the goal line, nobody is as automatic as Leon Dreisaitl. And you see he's averaging more time on ice than, than Connor McDavid. Those few games, three of them, that Connor McDavid missed with injury, Leon really elevated his game, was given that more opportunity, got the OT winner in Detroit on his birthday, and he's the type of player you have to look out for. So too is Connor McDavid. Although, only seven goals in 16 games for him. Isn't that that impressive? So we'll see if tonight's the night he bounces out of his shell. 14 assists, though. Incredible. 21 points in 16 games so far this season. Hey, isn't that the exact same stat line as Tim Stutzla? I think Timmy's played one more game, but seven goals, 14 assists. That's identical to Tim Stutzla, our young yeah superstar Connor McDavid with 57 shots on goal he's averaging 21 minutes and one second time on ice and out of every player in National Hockey League history that's played more than five games against the Ottawa Senators only one has more than Connor McDavid's points per game against the Ottawa Senators in 24 games McDavid has 11 goals and 31 (laughs) assists that's good for 42 points who who's ahead of him remember we talked about that yesterday like mike ridley dang i think i think he just tore up against the against the senate the early senators yeah he played for washington from uh 1986 until 1994 then played a year with the leafs in 94 95 mike ridley is the guy to watch if you're looking at all time sends records i'll get the splits up right here hey winnipeg guy too there you go uh yeah in 11 games against ottawa mike ridley had 23 points dang that's almost two points per game math guy uh but Connor mcdavid right there and obviously has played way more games if we move the parameters to more than 15 games against ottawa nobody has more points per game than Connor mcdavid how about that that's impressive. Yeah, Ross, I was looking at uh, another Oilers great in the great one, Wayne Gretzky, wondering what his splits were up against the Sens. It's kind of crazy to think of Gretzky going up against the Sens. Uh, but in 17 games, Gretzky had three, only three goals, but 25 assists, 28 points in 17 games. Insane. So these two are, uh, this should be a wanted poster. Yeah, and seriously. Wanted. Please return these people to outside the Canadian Tire Center. No trespassing inside the arena for these two men. 
Well, Ross, maybe if Pierre Dorian's uh, at the CTC, maybe he can kidnap McDavid. Uh, oh my God! Like he Throw wanted back to. to our interview <laughs> with him. You got to go check that one out. That was our second interview with Pierre Dorian. Maybe the most outrageous comment ever made by a National Hockey League general manager. <laughs> but these two are should be considered armed and dangerous at all times. Yeah. These guys' sticks are weapons of mass destruction against National Hockey League teams. Okay, enough of that. Why is Gary Bettman in Ottawa today? You might be asking. The NHL commissioner is commissioner is doing his yearly round trip. He goes and visits every single market. He'll be doing a media availability before tonight's game. The word is he will be meeting with Mayor Mark Sutcliffe as well. And front and center has to be getting that arena going at yep. the Breton Flats. Pilsy, we're on record. We've got our shovels. We're happy to jump in and mm -hmm. help with the process. But this thing. We've got the announcement. The NCC and Ottawa Senators seem to have a handshake agreement here for 10 acres of land, but the NHL probably wants to expedite this as quick as possible because every year the Senators play out in Canada is lost revenue in their mind. Yeah, and I mean, that's fair. Um, unfortunately, the the waste cleanup of Le Breton Flats, I, I think, is maybe one of the biggest roadblocks to getting things going there. Um, but yeah, it's great to see Gary Bettman in the nation's capital. I mean, hockey, Canada, the capital. He should be here more often, Gary Bettman. Um, yeah, he loves Ottawa, I bet. Yeah, I bet he absolutely loves it. But yeah, it's it's always big when he's in the building and you're up against the Edmonton Oilers, a Canadian team that went to the Stanley Cup Finals last year. So this would be a nice one to win just to... Just to let Gary know that the Sens are cooking something here. What do you think the chances are that Michael Anlauer brings up the pending first round pick punishment today? It better be one hundred percent because, like, they he's got to work on getting that down. I, like, it should be a second round pick. Even a second round pick is wild to have to pay a price, but a first round pick is that's that's Asinine. just mean. That's just bullying the Ottawa. Why Senators. you gotta be so mean? Yeah. Seriously. Um, no, I think that the, yeah, I think a second would be even you gotta better. You got to get it to a second. What I was going to say, and maybe this is even too much, too much finagling in it. The Senators first round pick should just be last that year. So no matter where they finish, they draft 32nd overall. Or 33rd. Why? Well, that way I'll, I'll well, no, I no, guess they're one of 32. Yeah, so you're taking that pick and moving it. Yeah, math 32. Guy. Yeah, not a math guy. You did really well with the um, the subtraction on the last postcast. So we'll Thanks. give you a break there, math Situational guy. math is not my thing, I guess. Situational game management, which is what I call scoreboard watching, has been fantastic recently. There's been a few hiccups here and there, but the Boston Bruins are, or, are really walking the plank right now, it feels like. Jim Montgomery seems like he's lost the locker room. And this is two years after having the most historic season in NHL history. He has no answers. He, he said his team wasn't in shape. Their conditioning was bad. This, that. Jeremy Swayman can't stop a beach ball. You think allmark has been bad. Yeah. Jeremy Swayman's got worse numbers than Allmark. So I don't Corpus know. Allo, who would have thought Corpus Allo would be the best goalie out of Allmark and Swayman at Corpus Allo. That's nuts. It's nuts. So Corpus Allo and his 901 save percentage is the top right now. Still <laughs> early returns, but they lose last night 5-1 to the Columbus Blue Jackets. It was 3 nothing before you could even blink an eye in the first period. Wow. I shouldn't say blink an eye. They scored their last goal with 30 seconds left in the period, but they dominated that first period. Then Boston made it interesting in the second by getting that uh, one goal. You're like, oh, if they come out in the third, blah, 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 blah. No, shorthanded goal to start the third period, and then they add another one. So 5-1, Boston is a team that's sitting in the second wild card spot right now, despite, I mean, they're below 500, but they played 20 games, three more than Ottawa. That's where we like games in hand, Pilsy, when the teams ahead of you keep losing to get those games in hand. So Boston is a team to watch. If you're an Ottawa Senators fan right now, they are in the midst of what should be a schedule that allows them to have a bit of success. They're off right now until Thursday when they play Utah at home. Then on Saturday night, they're going to be taking on 
at home, I believe, as well. They've got – sorry. the No, they're on the road. We're actually – that's a tough one because they're playing the Red Wings. So what, what do you do in that situation? I guess you hope the Red Wings keep losing and then maybe win that one. Regulation loss, at right? least. Right, yeah. Stay away from three-point games. Hey, yeah. Everyone's going to get points. So those are the ones you can't worry about too, too much. But um, has there been a team – I know you're not as much of a scoreboard watcher as I am, but did it bring you joy watching Detroit lose to San Jose last night? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You wish uh, San Jose could have figured it out a regulation, but we'll still take that. And to Ross... brink it too, eh? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Get and a, another team, the Ottawa Senators, are chasing in the wild card race. The Philadelphia Flyers, they lost to the Colorado Avalanche, Ross, and in regulation. So that's nice to see as well. So you got a little bit of help from the out of town scoreboard. It was kind of cool too. Uh, the Colorado Avalanche were in town. It was Eric Johnson's 1,000th yep. game ceremony. And usually it's the team president, GM, somebody who's in the organization you play with that comes out to bring you the plaque, the, the silver stick. His best buddy, Gabriel Landeskog, nice. with the Colorado Avalanche came out. And I thought that was a class move by the Flyers organization, even though he plays on the other team. But obviously, Eric Johnson won the Stanley Cup with Colorado, played such a long time there. And I think that, that was a pretty cool move for them to allow Gabriel Landeskog to be the guy to bring him the stick. Yeah, I like that. That's awesome. Yeah, no doubt. So tonight in the out-of-town scoreboard watch, we've got the Pittsburgh Penguins against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Sens fans, plug your nose. We're cheering for the Penguins in this one. I know. I know. But the Lightning are 9-6-1, and one, and the Lightning have a game in hand on Ottawa right now because they randomly had that full week off. Elsewhere, yeah. we're looking at the Calgary Flames to get a win at home over the New York Islanders in regulation, please. We've got the Canucks and Rangers. I know the Rangers are in a wild card spot right now, but I don't think I'm betting on that to be the case at the end of the season. Yeah. And so, too, with the Florida Panthers taking on the Winnipeg Jets. I mean, that's going to be a great hockey game. Second half of back-to-back -back, or a home-and-home -home between those two contending teams. Paul Maurice coming back to Winnipeg as well in that one so although paul reese wants the jets to win so exactly that's, that's an easy easy win for the jets so the real team we're cheering for tonight are the calgary flames and the pittsburgh penguins in the out-of-town scoreboard and the ottawa the senators we're cheering of course for the ottawa senators. of course the ottawa senators all right pilsy any final thoughts on today's show yes final thoughts for me is tonight is hockey fights cancer night and uh, our guy, Ian Mendez, getting back to writing as he wrote a great story. Go check it out on the Sens website site about the Steos family and Steve Steos' wife, Susanna, who had her own kind of battle with cancer. And Ian Mendez goes uh, into detail about what that journey was like, not only for Steve Steos, but the rest of their family. And it's a great story. And I think everybody has someone that they know or that is close to them that has been affected by cancer. Uh, it's an important cause to bring awareness and to raise money towards research and, um, you know, healthcare and chemo and all those things. So it's, it's a great cause. And I think the NHL does a really good job with the hockey fights, cancer nights, those purple jerseys look pretty sweet. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're thinking of everyone that has to deal with cancer, either in their own life or with people that they know and love. Only Ian Mendez could do this story as much justice on yeah. an official team website. You expect it to be very, you know, PR, just hear are the facts, but the emotion that Ian can evoke with his writing is, is really second to none. And I would recommend everybody to go read that story. And the fact that Susanna, she started chemo in November of last year. Think about it. That's when Ottawa was ripped the first round pick. That's when Pierre Dorian was yeah. fired. That's when Steve Steos became not only the president of hockey ops, mm -hmm. but the GM as well. Like for that to all be going on in the background of his personal life and to be able to hold it together. I know I couldn't in that situation for him to be as composed and steady as expected, as we've come to expect from him. I just think it speaks volume to the professionalism and the type of guy that Steos is. And yep. I mean, they're, they're teenage sweethearts, you learn in the story. So you know that Suzanne has the, the same values that Steve does. And we're thinking about the family, the kids, and, and Steve. And she got to ring the bell. That's amazing news that she got through her chemo. And uh, we're hoping all the best for Steve Steos and, and the entire Steos family. And 
Uh, we're also thinking about our guy, Brian Fraser, a yeah. Central citizen who lost his battle with blood cancer a couple of years ago. And um, as you mentioned, I'll just parrot it as well, that cancer affects everybody and it is a horrible disease. And we hope that the in, invoking of these nights and these, um, you know, they'll do the Radiothon later in the year as well. And just all these things that can help bring awareness, financial uh, donations for research so that it can become less and less prevalent and stop being the leading cause of death. That is why we fight. So we fight for everyone. You saw the Senator's video posting. Each player got to either shout out somebody who they're fighting for, for the kids, for the people out there. So it's an important night at the Canadian Tire Center tonight. And I'm sure all the boys want to bring home two points in honor of all those who are fighting. We'll be back for the postcast following tonight's game. It'll be Pilsy and Jack taking you through the Ottawa Senators game tonight against the Edmonton Oilers. Thank you so much for making us a part of your daily routine. We are here Monday through Friday and after Ottawa Senators games. For today, we say goodbye. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been another edition of the Locked On Senators podcast, your team every day.